Now, as a first example, and I'm, uh, you can see here are my list of examples, I'm just basically going to walk through the samples and comment on them as we get to them. The first sample here is, is, the vendor file, is a simple vendor file lookup. And what it's doing is we're, we're looking at the, um, the connection between the Excel spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet, and the back-end vendor database. We can see it's a it's a it's a regular spreadsheet, and I can show you that you know the fields are coming in the way you expect. So this is a date field, so I can add 90 days to that date field, and then copy it to the various columns down here. That sort of thing that works. These are number fields, so I can uh, take this and come over here and do an auto sum, and hit bang enter and I've got a total. So we're dealing with a real spreadsheet. The difference here is that all of these numbers are being pulled out by what amounts to a SQL query being issued to the PBS database. And that PBS database is responding by filling in the fields and giving us these numbers back. Now, the heart of the system comes up here under data. I'm, I'm running 2000, um, Office 2007. It's very, very similar in Office 2010 and somewhat different in earlier versions of Office. The features are all there, but they're just rearranged differently, obviously, for those of you who haven't yet gone getting used to the, the famous ribbon. Under 2007 up, they've actually improved this portion of the interface vastly. And all you need to do is pick up connections. And we have one connection here. And I go into properties and look at the definition. And that definition tells me where I'm getting the data. It's the SQL link, which I will show you in just a moment. And then it shows me the SQL statement. And we'll come back to that in a big way in a few minutes. And that's the actual SQL statement that's being issued to the PBS backend to extract the data. Now, <clears throat> there's a better, not a better way, a different way of looking at that. I can actually look at the query in a kind of a more graphical fashion. So if I click on Edit Query, and I just come next, pick off the nexts here, and look at the query in Microsoft Query, this is the nature of our query as set up by this, this uh, sub-function within Excel. What, what's happening here, and, and just a word of, of caution or um, uh, just a word to the wise, not all Excel installations include the Microsoft Query application. It's something that's free. It's on the Excel distribution disks, but sometimes people don't install them. This is a requirement for using either SQL or ODBC. Um, simply because this is the thing that formulates from your graphical representation, from your drag and drop, which we'll be looking at. It, from that, it actually formulates the SQL statements. And what I've done here is I've requested vendor name, number, city, state, balance, and first purchase date. I've requested those from this list of fields that are in the vendor file. And so I can add others. For instance, I've got uh, city, city, state, and zip. I could add address one, for example, here. And then if I refresh, I'm going to pick up all my address ones. So uh, this is really a, a nice, quick, easy, drag and drop kind of environment. I'm going to get rid of this because I don't really want it for my, my purposes. But, and then when I'm done with the query, what happens is it then returns this data to Microsoft Excel. And we have this data that's been refreshed. Or we can simply click Refresh All up here, and it will up the data. Now, <clears throat> this is not a one-time thing. When I save this spreadsheet, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm saving this as an Excel file, not an XLSX. So it's giving me some, <clears throat> some warnings here. Um, but when I save this file, I'm not only saving the current data that you see right here, including the data I've added, I'm also saving all of these parameters that we saw up here that related to making the connection. And so what's going to happen is every time I open this spreadsheet, I can click Refresh and get the latest data. So for a real quick example, I hear I have a pretty much a garbage vendor down here. If I bring that vendor up in PBS, let me just log into my SQL, PBS SQL, bring it up, vendors. 
sort by number. It's down at the end there. Double click this. I'm going to just change the name. The quick brown fox dot 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 dot. Save that. Now that's written that back to SQL. I don't have to do anything else at this point. It's written back to SQL. So I come back to here and we see the original junk in there. If we now click refresh all, once it's done, the quick brown fox. So this tube is not only established by this process, it's maintained so that when I save this database, every time it comes up, it has the original data, but I can also click refresh all. So that's the, the kind of takeaway I want to do from this first simple example. The one other thing I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about uh, where a couple of the uh, components are and, and how they work and then we'll be on into some more examples. So let me, minute fin um, let me finish off with this. I think we can actually get rid of this, but I'll just minimize it. Let's look at um, XDBC first. In, in here, in my course copy of version 12.0 in the course, what we have here is a folder. When we install the XDBC, we end up with a folder. And basically, this combination of folders with files in them corresponds to the data dictionary. These are the definitions of the fields. In the, the case of SQL, this is built into the SQL schema so that there isn't a special place. But there is SQL out there, and so if we go out, if we were to go out and look at my SQL database, we would find out here, let's go into here, program files, and part of what I'm trying to do here is also to take out the mystery out of, out of this. Under Microsoft SQL, MS10, MS SQL. Here is my stuff and, you can, and, and uh, a variety of backups and the data files themselves and so on and so forth. So we've got these files, and you can see some of these were updated. This is the actual database itself was updated today as, <clears throat> as we did updates and so on and so forth. So this is where the SQL data is held. Everybody knows where the PBS data is held. So the combination of the data dictionaries and where the data is, where the SQL data is, where the PBS data is, where the data dictionaries are for SQL, where the data dictionaries are for the XDBC. The combination of those two pieces is held in one spot, which is the data source name. And that data source name you can get at by running Settings, Control Panel, Administrative Tools, and ODBC. Windows 7, it's slightly differently arranged, but it's the same concept. Now, for your, most of your clients, you're just going to have one or two, obviously, being in development here and doing a lot of testing. I've got a lot of stuff out here. Some would call it crap, but it's my stuff. Uh, here is our SQL link, and here is our course data link. If we configure, look at the configuration for the XDBC, it tells us where our data dictionaries are, and um, actually it's a simple file that points to where our data dictionaries are and where our files are. And by the way, for those of you who have not used this before, with any version, any recent version, you want to change the maximum columns to 512. It defaults to 256 because that used to be the Excel maximum, but with the new version 7 Excel, they've, <clears throat> they've expanded the number of columns. And it turns out we have a number of files, things like the payroll history, that have substantially more than 256 fields in them so that this number needs to be upped to the, the, the next limit up there, which is 512. So that's the XDBC setup. The SQL setup, because it's kind of all tucked together with the SQL database itself, is rather more simple. And basically, we look at uh, what's the name of our link, and put in a description, and then this is the instance name. For those of you who are familiar with SQL, this is the instance name. And <clears throat> uh, there, are additional, there are additional parameters typically not touched in behind this, which we can go after, but uh, 
the default here is the PBS data, and that will have been set up when we installed our SQL. So there's really not an awful lot out there, but the fundamental concept here that I want to make come home is the fact that both the XDBC and the SQL use this ODBC administrator, this this connection administrator, to point to where the data is so that you have a single name, a single name, which tells the program all the technical details for making the connection. It's like having the GPS and punching in favorites, go home, you don't need to do anything after that, it sets everything up and directs you home. That's, that's the data source name. Now, just coming back to our spreadsheet, we were looking at the connection data under data connections. If we look at the properties on the definition sheet of the properties, here is that data set name. And this is more than information because uh, my second uh, <clears throat> to the wise kind of uh, point here is if you're doing development work, whether it's in Access or Excel or Crystal, almost inevitably the data source name that you will be using on your machine will be different from the data source name on your client machine. It's just in the nature of it. They're probably going to call it PBS or PBS V12 or something. Um, <clears throat> whereas you, you, like me, you may have a dozen or two dozen different setups for different clients and so on and so forth, and you have to keep them straight. Well. This should not be in any respect a hindrance because, for example, here in Excel, when we, when we take this particular spreadsheet to the client, all we have to do is having set up the, D, the DSN at the client, we come into these connection properties and change this thing. That's it. And we're cool. So uh, the point here is within the caveat that you will have to change one or two parameters in these connection properties, and there are similar things in Access and Crystal. Within that caveat, then you can develop on your machine and take these over and simply rename the data source name, and basically you're away.